And what is that one moment in your day that just makes you happy? On my way home from work, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and this is School of Hustle. Our friends at WeWork have let us uh, step into the WeWork Times Square and film today. And uh, we are really excited to be here because as always, we are talking to people who are making their own way. And Rachel Cho is no exception. Rachel is a celebrated floral designer whose work has been featured in the New York Times, the Huffington Post, Harper's Bazaar, and Martha Stewart Living. Everybody, please help me welcome Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Your work is, um, it's so beautiful. And um, you've written a piece for the Huffington Post mm -hmm. where you talk about your um, work with flowers. And I'd love for you to tell me about, you know, how that came to be your passion in life. Well, <laughs> it was a realized passion. Um, I didn't initially love flowers growing up. My mom has had a flower shop all of our lives growing up, I have two older sisters, and when you're a little kid and you're forced to work um, during holidays and you know weekends, um, flowers just became work to me. Um, it wasn't until after college when I was really trying to find myself and look for uh, something that I could be passionate about when I went back to my mom's flower shop and realized that you know these are cool things that I could work with potentially and then um, go into business with and. Uh, Later on, I realized that I was, you know, becoming good at putting flowers together, putting colors together, and that's when it became a realized passion. Many of the events that you do are high-end corporate events, high-end weddings. Um, you know, how do you keep your creative vision and that passion alive when you're working with such demanding clients? So a lot of the passion and the inspiration comes from um, the client themselves and when they ask for certain things and you know just really listening to what the clients want um, and then having a creative vision for them um, really helps to sort of move things along when you're guiding them through uh, different ideas and working with you know also their budget because you can just yeah. go crazy with whatever ideas that you can throw at them but um, kind of keeping a mark on you know the target budget and what you know how much somebody wants to spend but then just still making it beautiful and making sure that you're doing a great service for the client well exactly and it's interesting because I was thinking budget um, flowers are not cheap what is the most expensive flower would you say that you've worked with or that you've heard of flowers could definitely be very very expensive from like the White King Protea, uh, which can honestly cost $75 a stem. Um, but it's a huge flower, so it takes up a lot of space. So, yeah. you know, you, it's a good value in that way. Yeah. There's also Lily of the Valley. When um, Kate Middleton had her Lily of the Valley bouquet, it was tiny, but I'm sure it costs a ton of money because each stem is a dollar amount. And then when you're putting together like 200 of them, that costs a lot of money. I'm wondering, you know, it's not just about is it beautiful or not, but you are thinking of budget when you work with your clients, and then you have to source everything. Right. So what goes on in the back end? I mean, there, there's that moment that you must go through before you actually get to the vase or the or the arch. Mm -hmm. What goes into that back end to get you there with, with everything ready to go? So the back end is where the bulk of the work is, and also yeah. that's the most fun part. Because, you know, when you put together um, the inspiration board and what you're actually going to present, now you have to think of all the different ingredients that you have to put together. So either it be seasonal items, so it's all calling all of the vendors, doing a lot of research, um, and putting together all the moving parts of what will make an arrangement or an yeah. installation. And then just making sure that you're hitting the mark on what the budget was. Yeah. And, um, you know, come event time and execution time, it's all sourcing, uh, just really planning ahead and making sure that you're completely organized and, um, you know, executing in the most, you know, flawless way that you can. This is gonna sound really boring, but um, could you guess? 
roses? Yes. No, stop, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, roses probably come in the most abundant amount of sh shades, colors and shapes, <gasps> and I never get sick of it. And it's, it's um, there's just so many varieties of them, and there's so many different scents for different types of roses that's out there. I love standard roses. I love uh, garden roses are my favorites. Um, and I just love them. You know, I I love what you're doing. Your art it, with your your arrangements are so beautiful. And um, I do want to talk to you more about your business um, soon. But I want to pause for a second and play a game that we like to call Hustle Time. We are going to uh, get to know you and get a little personal, and then and then we'll get back to the entrepreneurial questions. Okay. Jonathan, please bring out the cards. Here you go. Good luck. And I would love to ask you to shuffle, cut, um, whatever you feel you want to do to get them ready for the game. We're going to set a timer for 60 seconds. And you want to say the first thing that comes to mind. OK. So Jonathan, I'd love to ask you to um, set a timer for 60 seconds and also help me to count. Sound good? OK. Your go-to outfit. Black outfit, black pants. Vacation, lounge on the beach or an active hike? Lounge on the beach. Would you rather have more time or more money? More time. Who is someone that defines successful to you? Oh my gosh. Uh, my sisters. Favorite breakfast food? Um, an egg sandwich. Song that is currently stuck in your head? The Ariana Grande song, but I don't know the title. I'll take it. <laughs> New York City tourists, help with directions or keep on your own way? Keep on your own way. Karaoke, is it about talent or commitment? Both. New York or London? New York. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite movie theater treat? Popcorn. Would you rather never get angry or never be envious? Never be envious. Go to karaoke song? Nothing compares to you by Sinead O'Connor. Ideal fake sick day? Uh, sleep. Yes or no, socks with sandals? Uh, no. No. <laughs> All right. So, so we got 15. A nice, nice job. That was great. Tell us um, what a typical day looks like for you. Um, a typical day, there's never really a typical day because it could range from my morning starts at going to the nursery or um, going to the flower market or having a client meeting somewhere. Um, but always there's definitely some downtime with, um, you know, being in front of the computer, um, speaking with my designers and going through some like, you know, creative direction or something like that. And what is that one moment in your day that just makes you happy? On my way home from work, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Hey, you know what, you put in a long day at work and... It's very satisfying yeah. and I just want to get home and, and you know, relax you know, hopefully have some time to see my kids before they go down. Yeah. Yeah, it's that balance, so it's that work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, and that's why you work as hard as you do, to enjoy those yeah. things, right? But that's not to say I also enjoy, you know, a lot of different parts of what happens in my studio or just yeah. work, either it be, you know, chit-chatting with my vendors and, you know, catching up with their family or um, finding out the latest and what's happening with the flowers. And, yeah. you know, there's always, always some sort of drama that happens with flowers in the world. What's the best piece of advice that you've been given along the way? The best piece of advice, um, this was a long time ago, even before uh, I started going into the business, is really keep positive people around you. I like and that. positive energy is super important. I really yeah. believe in that. Um, and any negativity, just walk away mm -hmm. and make sure it's not around you. On the flip side, what's the worst piece of advice that you've been given along the way? That's a hard question for me, actually, because I, I think I've probably tuned any bad advice out anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I go through life without having any regrets. So even if there was a mistake in deciding on something, um, I learn from it and make sure that I'm never going to do that again, yeah. you know, and just move on. In your journey, has there ever been a moment where you felt like walking away? Um, yes. Uh, I actually took a hi hiatus for a month to go travel to Europe by myself. I just packed up my stuff and then I 
took trains all over. I went to Paris, I went to Berlin, and I just needed that time to just kind of reflect on why I was working so hard in my 20s, killing myself. And then when I came back, um, I had a really refreshed uh, mindset to, you know, just tackle on and just keep moving on. I love that. What is one thing that you still need to learn? One thing that I really, really need to learn is to have that work-life balance. It's very hard for me um, because my first and I, I have two kids, um, but my first and you know my first baby is my business, so I can't yeah. stay away from it. You know, right. um, so it's it's hard as hard as it is. I really just have to give myself a break, and I have to remember to do that. And what is um, something that you want people to learn from you? I think, um, you know, just always never forgetting um, being kind to people and really listening and understanding. Um, and, you know, as I think time goes on and, um, you know, I just go through this career, it just makes me more and more humbled in a way, you know, where I meet a lot of talent. There's so much competition out there and that really humbles you. Yeah. Um, even after I make something, you know, I strive to keep doing better. Well, my husband actually joined me in my business because um, it's kind of blew up out of my control. So about three years ago, he joined me. Um, and now we're on a venture to just keep on going and um, not just flowers, but really dabbling into other avenues. Um, because I think that, you know, right now it's a digital age and we just want to sort of um, tap it. Well, I love on your website the time lapse video building that that arch. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun watching that. You had a how to for boutonnieres. I saw yes. that. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the idea of um, you know turning your your passion into digital content mm -hmm. and really like thinking about how can we inspire people to work with us and see our vision and our creativity through video. I think it's great. I mean, it's been done for decades for food, right? Yeah. And you know, flowers are now becoming more and more accessible. Why not make it even more accessible for people? Um, it's a tangible, beautiful product that, um, you know, it shouldn't be a hard um, technique oriented thing. Yeah. It should be very friendly, you know. Yeah. Everyone should have flowers in their house and it's not and it, hard. And it's an expression, because I would, I would guess um, that if we had the same set of flowers in front of each of us and you said, okay, Shannon, make a bouquet and I'm gonna make one too, they would look very different, like even though it's the same set of flowers, right? That's what I love about yeah. it. We all have our little differences yeah. and different nuances that I find like really beautiful. Well, we let everybody know in social that you were coming. And I have uh, two questions for you. Sure. So Mike asks, are there any flowers you don't like working with? Um, fortunately, I'm not allergic to any flowers. Maybe some types of greenery, like this greenery called Spring Rye that has like little tiny prickly things. That one time it got in my eye and my eye puffed up like this. Aww. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, like fortunately, I'm not allergic, but I love, yeah. I, you know, I'm a flower advocate. Equal opportunity flowers. Carnations, baby, breath, I don't care. Like, bring it on. <laughs> David asks, what is the craziest arrangement you've ever done? The craziest arrangement that I've ever done was making a giant floral wig for, um, it was for a celebrity. Um, and so, I don't want to name drop. I don't even know if I should say it, but it was a giant, like huge beehive looking, you know, arrangement where it was all filled with flowers. And I have pictures of it where, you know, it's kind of, how, what are the mechanics going into that? Um, and I used a flower bucket, turned it upside down, put some padding on it, stuffed, you know, on the inside, caged yeah. it, and just put flowers on them. It was crazy, it was very heavy. I'm gonna do a little uh, Googling later. I want to try to figure out what this is and see that. That sounds incredible. Yeah, that, that's, that's wild. Well, we have one last question for you. And this comes from our, our lovely pug and our friend Noodle. So Noodle, Noodle considers himself to be very creative. 
just like you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he has a very difficult time managing his client requests with his own creative vision. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Noodle? Do you have any advice for Noodle on how he can keep from compromising his creative integrity in his work? Um, I think that goes back to, you know, like a bride can say, I want my wedding flowers to be red, white, and blue. And I still have to um, uphold her request. I would probably steer her into, okay, we can do it in that color palette, but we're gonna make it very tasteful and a different twist. So instead of making it red, white, and blue, how about we make it navy blue and okay. make it, you know, against the clean, crisp oh, white. Likes it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to make it more interesting rather than themey, yeah. um, and kind of giving it your own uh, classic taste uh, to it rather than it being like, could turn out to be something that you actually don't want to put your name on. <laughs> you know? That's an awesome answer. Well, um, it has been a lot of fun talking to you about your business and your just incredible talent. And, and we always like to end uh, School of Hustle with um, a final uh, moment of inspiration. Go ahead and just pick a card and I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. And I want you to tell me um, if you agree, disagree, live it, love it, hate it, or any of the above. Okay. This is by uh, Florence Nightingale. I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. What do you think? You like it? Yeah. You live it? What, what do you think? I hate making excuses and I yeah. don't like hearing excuses. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think, you know, whatever happens, you sort of own it. Either it be a mistake and a mistake that you didn't make, but you were a part of. I think have, you know, making excuses is probably the, the worst thing that you can do. Yeah. Just learn from it, own it, and move on. Absolutely. Well, I'm inspired and I had a lot of fun with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed speaking with you. You're so, so welcome. Um, everybody who's watching, thank you very much for watching. We're bringing School of Hustle to you every Wednesday on Facebook premiere, um, Instagram TV. We have teasers on, on LinkedIn and Twitter. We're just follow GoDaddy all across social. And don't miss out on fabulous people like Rachel who have lots of in, important advice to share. Um, so let us know what you think in the comments. Keep watching and we'll see you soon.